Hey guys, how you doing? This is Travis. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Well, when it debuted in 2015, the Toshiba Chromebook 2 offered the Chromebook user a premium experience with a 1080p Full HD screen and Skull Candy audio. Three years later, we're going to take a look at this Chromebook and ask the question, is it still worth buying in 2018? All right, well, stay tuned and we're going to find out. Here we go. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go over all the details of this model. So what you're looking at here, guys, is the Toshiba Chromebook CB35B3340. And I'm just going to tell you right now, when you start looking these things up online, there were probably six different models or different variations of this Chromebook that uh, went for sale back in 2015 through 2016. Uh, Toshiba is no longer uh, in the Chromebook manufacturing market. Um, in fact, they're basically almost entirely out of the standard consumer market. They're just more of a business supplier now of machines, but they did make one of the best Chromebooks uh, that was out there at the time. This model that you're looking at features a 13.3 inch full HD display. You're looking at a, a 1080p display. It has an Intel Celeron 3215U processor with four gigs of RAM, but only 16 gigs of solid, uh, solid state drive storage space. Uh, let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about the overall design. What can you expect? Keyboard, a little bit shallow. The design itself was essentially inspired by Apple for the uh, MacBook Air. It does have an Apple S trackpad with the two finger scrolling, the tap to touch, but then also the click to touch to select. Um, the keys themselves, like I said, are a bit shallow, not backlit, but there are models that are out there and we'll talk about some of the different variants that you can find and also what you can expect to pay. Uh, for this model, if you happen to look one up on the used market, we're probably talking at around $150 as of uh, March of 2018 on eBay, but you got to watch out because these are still available new in a box for anywhere between three dollars to $400. Yes, that is right. Non-working models tend to sell between $50 to $100 for parts only. Uh, like I said, the design itself was basically inspired and or copied by the uh, MacBook Air. You can see how it kind of tapers down a little bit. Not an aluminum case. It features an all-plastic case. does have sturdy hinges. Let's go ahead and start on the left-hand side. We've got your charging port right here. We've got a standard USB 2.0 uh, port on the left side. A SD card slot on the left, which is also very handy. Okay, on the right side, we've got a USB 3.0 slot, as well as HDMI out, and it does support full 1080p uh, output. It does have a Kensington lock device um, space on the on the, the right-hand side, as well as your headphone jack. Uh, the finish is kind of a matte silver. Um, it is really nice. I do actually keep a cover on this to protect it. The bottom is just a gray plastic, and it has the serial numbers. It has the date of manufacture and so on, as well as the model number and all that fun stuff. Uh, when it was new, it also features a battery life of nearly 10 hours. Uh, mine is more or less fully charged, and right now it features five hours and 42 minutes of charge left, but this is three years later, but the battery still almost pulls six hours when it's uh, just right off the plug. As for the specifications and the size, it's 12.6 inches by 8.4 inches by 0.76 of an inch thick. Uh, it was a little bit uh, thicker than the Acer Chromebook 13 that came out about the same time, but only weighs uh, 2.97 pounds. Uh, if you really want to get technical, it does feature uh, 378 nits of brightness. It is a very bright screen. You turn up all the way, you do notice it. It's a little hard to tell on this camera, but it's very sharp. It's very bright. I mean, I'm not one who criticizes Chromebook screens anyway, but this one was absolutely fantastic. Definitely on par with what you might find in an Apple Retina display. We're looking at a Delta E test score of 0.87 for those of you that need that kind of information. Okay, and it also features uh, stereo audio for recording as well as a built-in webcam, which is also a nice bonus. And it does run the uh, Google apps with very little trouble at all, thanks to the constant updates that Google still pushes through on their Chromebooks. Now, when we do a little bit of benchmark performance testing on the model, it does produce an Octane score of 8389, which isn't stellar compared by today's models, which get up into the 15 to 20,000 point range. But 8389 is more than usable for most of your daily tasks. Um, and that's pretty much on par with what you're going to get for models made around the same period with the same processor. Um, as for YouTube videos, like I said, the 1080p is awesome. If there was one real complaint I would have about the model, it's that the print is small. And I do find myself having to magnify the print to read it a little bit better. But that's just more of a product of my old age more than anything else. Let's just go ahead and spool up a video real quick and just see how it runs. Now, mind you, my wife is downstairs watching TV and she's currently streaming. So you can see how well this handles buffering. We're going to go to full HD here as all my videos are filmed in full HD. Go ahead and skip the ad. Uh, another thing I'd mention is that it does feature audio that has been fine-tuned by Skull Candy. And you can easily fill your one room with audio from the speakers with no problems at all. And again, nice and sharp, nice and bright. 
either two or four gigabytes of RAM, but it is upgradable. So it is a very uh, usable machine. That's one of those items that you're going to pay a premium for. You're going to pay almost as much for this as you're going to pay for a lot of Chromebooks that, that are coming new these days. But you might not necessarily get the 13-inch screen or an HD screen. You might get a matte finish screen possibly 1080 but you also might get it with less ram or a lesser processor although this is not the newest processor that's out there um, it was one of the better processors offered for this model um, i don't want to get this too bright so it washes out the screen but let's go on and check out the new york times this is one of those text heavy picture heavy websites and this just kind of gives you an idea how well this thing is able to just simply bring up information for you as you can see it without any kind of lag without any kind of stuttering you can pretty much go where you need to. Uh, you got, like I said, you got four gigs of RAM. I still have about eight or nine gigs of space available. I'm just clicking on a random link here. And uh, it's plenty of storage space for what I do. I have noticed that there's been more and more updates that get pushed out to Chromebooks all the time. It used to be, I would get an update maybe once a month. Now it seems like I'm getting one every week, which is fine. But you also might find yourself starting to run a little bit slim on space. You can plug in like a little nub USB. Uh, flash drive on the left hand side, a pin drive if you need something to store your items on, say downloads and things like that. New York Times not a problem. Uh, YouTube not a problem. Okay, now I'm just closing out some extra tabs. Uh, Facebook, Facebook runs fine whether you're watching videos or whether you're streaming, whatever you decide to do. Um, it does run with no problems. And I mean, the screen is just absolutely fantastic. So it is, it is a wonderful value. And this actually serves as a backup machine um, in my classroom. Whenever my student's laptop go, goes down or if they need something they're trying to connect and they're unable to, I actually just hand this off to them. They sign in, I keep an eye on what they do and they're able to use it with no problem. So it is a, it is a really good value. Um, fit and finish, you have to be careful because these are not the most durable models out there. Uh, you might find that they do have some issues from time to time. Uh, one of the big complaints that some guys had, some of the earlier models had some problems with the screens going out, the video cable snapping on them. If you find a model at this point that's still functional and the seller can guarantee it's gonna work, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about any issues. Just make sure it doesn't have any bright spots on the screen, no pink spots on the screen, there's no rainbows going on. You can get replacement screens on eBay for these. They're, they're relatively inexpensive, although it would be quite a chore to replace it, and I'm not sure if there's any guides online that show you how to do it. There's also replacement batteries out there too. If you're somebody who likes to tinker, you might be able to pick up a four parts model and possibly build your own and get it going. Uh, but like I said, there's an i3 model out there, and there's also models that have backlit keyboards. Personally, I'd love to have an i3, a core i3 processor with the backlit keyboard, but the problem is that those premium, those are premium models, and they still run around $250 to $300 if you can find them used. Uh, four to $500, believe it or not, if you can find them new. I often wonder sometimes what some of these vendors are thinking when they purchase these things, but overall, it's an awesome Chromebook. I would personally take this over a smaller Chromebook with a faster processor, simply because this has the RAM, it has the storage space to keep running, it's got the video processing ability, the audio. It still makes it a strong contender today, so would I consider buying one of these? Absolutely, I would still consider buying one used just as long as I knew the history of it, if I known it was taken care of, etc. And I think I paid close to $300 for this, maybe $269, $300 when I bought it new. The retail price on it was $330. But again, you have no trouble running any of your uh, Google apps, whether you'd like to do Hangouts or if you're somebody who likes to do things through Google Drive. Um, you have no trouble whatsoever running the apps that you need to. I mean, it's, it's all basically right there. Just go into Drive comes right up and you're good to go. So I Chromebooks overall, I wasn't very big on them when they first came out. Now, like I said, I've got three or four of them floating around the house and uh, they do run really, really well. So that's it, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and have a few final thoughts and we'll wrap this one up. Okay, guys, so in my opinion, this Chromebook is gonna offer you a premium experience for a bit of a premium price, but I really think the, the price itself is, is an easy trade-off for the features that you're given. If you can find one with a backlit keyboard, definitely do so. There's about six different model numbers out there. Make sure you have at least a 1.6 gigahertz processor or above or an i3 processor and you can't go wrong. They're all gonna come with the, uh, the four, uh, four gigs of RAM as well as a minimum of 16 gigs of storage space. But it's a shame that Toshiba got out of the Chromebook market because they were really doing a great job at the time making this premium model. So that's it, guys. I want to thank you for joining me today. This was just a quick overview of the Toshiba Chromebook 2, the 2015 release. All right? Like I said, this one is three years old. It's still holding up to daily use in the classroom. Uh, if you can find one you know, and it's in good shape, don't hesitate to buy one. But, guys, that's it for today. So thank you for joining us. If you like what you see, please like or subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, I think that's about it. So we'll be bringing you more reviews of some more vintage machines as well as some new gear coming up down the pipeline. So make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks for joining us today, guys. I want you to have a great week, and we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.